I'm here to introduce the next session. It's the round table business to consumer. And uh, to lead that is Mr. Lee Hayhurst. Please enter the stage. Welcome. Hey. <laughs> You got cheering in spite of everyone had wine and food now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah you, you'll get more. You'll get more. Um, you're an experienced business and travel journalist, editor with 11 years' experience working both on and offline for business to business publisher in the travel sector. And now digital travel, online marketing, and technology sector. So it's kind of. Good approach, right? And you're yep. a journalist, so yep. we expect super tough questions. And no, maybe not. Yeah. They won't come again if I ask. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, maybe, no, and uh, now Please comes no. the most important information about you. You're a Liverpool fan. <laughs> 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 so, so uh, we, yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to hit him in the break later. <laughs> so, uh, and I leave the stage to you. Thank you. Fifty minutes on screen there. And Good stuff. Thank you, Lars. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you, Lars. As, he, as Lars said, Liverpool sports are saying it's 5 0 tonight. I'm not going to say which way, but it's going to be 5 0. <laughs> uh, okay. We've got uh, a great panel coming up. I, I've got to say, I'm lucky in two ways to be here today. Firstly, I'm really lucky that here we are in Spain conducting a, a travel conference in English, thankfully, because if it was in Spanish, I couldn't do it. So, head, so hats off to all those guys who've been on stage so far today, whose, English, whose language, English, isn't their first language and have done a brilliant job speaking in English. I know we heard, we heard from Rakuten earlier on about how English is really important, and we're, we're, we're very lucky that that's the case. I, I certainly am, and so are you, otherwise this would be useless. So um, I'd like to um, introduce our panellists for our discussion over the next 50 minutes. First up, we've got uh, Javier Delgado from Iberostar. Javier. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, my Again, excuse my Spanish <laughs> pronunciation of these, uh, these, some of these names. Secondly, we have Carlos Rios from Hotel Urbano. Carlos. <laughs> Next up, Juan Pablo Lafos from El Mundo. Then an easy one, Martin Kleinman from Last Minute. And last but not least, Ricardo Fernandez from Destinia. Destinia. Thank you. Take a seat, guys. So I've, I've, I've briefly introduced you, I know your names, I know your companies, but just let's go from right to left, starting with uh, Javier. Just a little bit about, uh, about you and about your company, just something that the guys won't know you know about. Iberostar. Sure. Um, Iberostar is a family-owned company operating 120 properties, representing about 35,000 rooms, mainly in the Mediterranean and the Caribbean. Yep. Uh, it's been uh, in the hotel business for about 30 years, but we belong to a group that has been in tourism for over 60 years. I joined recently, about uh, 10 months ago. I was coming from the tech side of the business for the last 15 years, working in uh, companies like Expedia or Google, and I currently run all the digital operations and the commercial operations at Iberstar. Good. And thanks for having us. Excellent. Good to have you. Carlos. Uh, I am the CTO of Hotel Urbano. I'm being since 2013 at Hotel uh, Indeed, a family company that we mainly use in Brazil, but we're beginning to go abroad in the, this year, probably. Yep. Okay. Go on. I'm Juan Pablo Lafos, CEO of Almundo. Almundo is an omnichannel uh, travel company. Uh, basically, we do have about 50% of our, uh, our sales are online and 50% are offline. We do have about 100 stores along Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, Colombia. Uh, we are very technology focused. We have a really strong technology team, uh, very robust uh, technology platform, and I've been for about six years as a CEO of the company. Okay, Martin. Hi, uh, Martin from lastminute.com group. Um, I mean, lastminute.com last celebrated, we celebrated our 20th uh, year anniversary last year, but uh, the lastminute.com group is, uh, is many brands and in many countries, um, I don't know, and is, a, is, is always been an innovative and very fun OTA 
Yeah. <laughs> I'll declare an interest. <laughs> and our, our company, <laughs> I was just mentioning it to Martin earlier on, is owned by an ex last minute person who sold you, his business to last minute. What I found is I meet ex last minute.com people wherever <laughs> I go, like on business and on holiday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a travel industry cool. as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, um, Ricardo. Hey. Hello, everyone. It's Ricardo from Destinia. We are an amazing Spanish company focused. Well, we started 18 years ago in the B2C, and now we are in the B2C, in the B2B, and trying to provide technology for some clients and special partners. Uh, and it's my pleasure to be here with all of you. Super. Thanks, guys. So what we thought we'd do is start by actually reflecting on some of the stuff we heard before lunch, because um, we had some amazing stuff from some... Big speakers, not least the guys from Alibaba we thought was interesting, and, and, and Rakuten, and what's going on in that part of the world. And um, you know, one of the things that stuck out to me was Alibaba saying, you know, e-commerce is going to be dead within a few years. Throw it over to Martin. He's, you're an e-commerce <laughs> company. What, what, what do you think he really meant by that, and what does it mean for you as a company? What, what, you know, do, you think, do you think that's true for a start, or is it, is it just going to evolve into something different? That we but, don't? But true, for sure. I mean, a lot of the discussions that we already had was that uh, we think about the customer first and what the customer wants. The customer may want to purchase online. The customer may want to purchase in a shop. And we don't want to restrict, or you know, we, we only want to encourage all the different places where a customer can, uh, can go and purchase travel. So, uh, no, no, absolutely true. And uh, you know, echoing what a lot of people already said, this is just the starting point. Mm. Uh, whether you want to buy a hotel for tonight for 99 euros or you want to book a cruise for uh, 9,999 <laughs> euros, it's a, these are very different customers. So I think that we've got to appreciate that uh, booking online, booking offline, uh, booking through many different channels, we have to be open to all of this, all yeah. of this opportunity. When you hear these guys from China and India, places like that, talk about figures and the numbers they deal with, it's easy to go, just you can't believe the size and scale of what they're talking about. I mean, it's just yes. pretty astonishing. Um, does that make you fear, fear potentially that you know, what is happening over there is eventually going to come and uh, sort of take over what's happening in, in our part of the world? Or do you think there's just going to be always different nuances, different markets? What, what sort of things do you think we, we should be aware of that's coming our way? I guess, um, uh, I guess the, the scale in the Asian market is absolutely crazy. You know? All of us think that, okay, guys, you are going to come to conquer all of us. Uh, but I guess it's something the experience showed me is uh, there's always a, a local hero, something like that in every country. So if you come to Spain, there's a local player that gives a real value to the, to the customer, to the companies, uh, in, in every single thing. And in every country in the world, something happens. It's the same. If you go to China, for example, sea trip is the number one. Okay, it's true. But if you go to Hong Kong, in Hong Kong, Agoda is the number one. Mm -hmm. And it's the same country, it's not the same, all of us know it, but it's, it, there's always a space for someone with a different value. Uh, and for example, if you look at Expedia or Booking.com, they are the super big players, but not the super one in yeah. all the countries. And this is the opportunity all of us have to yeah. give something valuable. Well, I mean, that's very true. I think you said before, there's room for everybody. You look, look at the British, British market. It's a very um, mature market. Yes. We Expedia, Travel Republic. Over Expedia, the last 20 years. Yeah. Exactly. They've, they, as Expedia and Booking even last have grown. Minute some time, you know? <laughs> even last minute. But, but, but we've, had, we've, had, we, we've had love holidays rise over the last six, seven years to, to, to amazing scale. So it just proves there is opportunity, Martin. Yeah, you, you still, definitely still... opportunity. I, I think uh, I've been at uh, lastminute.com for a while. I won't say how long. <laughs> and, uh, and I always see these trends. I always, there's always, oh, before that, I was a hotelier. And when I was a hotelier, there were other players who were number one. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, booking.com uh, appear. And then, and then another, and another, and another. So there's always, I feel there's always room and flexibility, not just for the big players, but for I don't want to say the small players or the medium players, but there's always room, and, and like Ricardo said, um, there's always, you're always the expert in certain destinations or certain niches or certain technology. And to really understand the expectation of the customer, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, let's talk about that customer. So in, in Carlos, in your, in your neck of the woods down in, in South America, what, what, what expectations do they have that you think you provide that others haven't been able to? To give, give you your position uh, down there. Well, in Brazil, most of Brazil, you operate in Brazil, uh, we see price. Price is the first thing that users see. Okay. We try to fetch users in you know, all different channels, uh, Facebook, Instagram, email marketing from our database. And they all are driven by price. Uh, we actually, it's, in the last year, we do some packages with uh, one real of value. And it will, 
was crazy. We yeah. each all, all, all the users came to our servers in, in, you know, in Spike, and you, we be, it, it, it was really amazing for us. Yeah, and in terms of the channels, we, we, you mentioned omnichannel a minute ago. We'll, we'll discuss what that means in a minute because it's a bit of a jargon phrase. <laughs> but but are, are they using multiple channels to discover what prices are the best? What what are they preferring to use? Are they very mobile driven? Actually, we have to be where the user is. We don't know when the user will be accessing our site or where the user is. So we must be present in all channels. Uh, we mostly do in you know, our database, mail, mail marketing, but we have to, a big presence in Brazil in uh, uh, Facebook page. We are the greatest Facebook fan page in Brazil in tourism. Yeah. So it's easy for us to, to fetch these users, to, to have to make the users come back for, to our site. Yeah. And Juan, what's, what's, what's your customers' main behavioral traits that you, you, you do so well at um, providing I mean, for? I agree that price is always important, but you know, we do have a, a lot of customers that do need support. I mean, they, know, they need the travel expert knowledge. Yeah. So you know, they, they, they call or, or they, they come to our stores. And especially when they're looking for like a, a complex product like packages or prices, you know, we were talking about. And that's, that's when, uh, you know, the, the knowledge and the value of the travel experts, uh, is, is, it's important. Yeah. How, how can, so those travel experts then, they're, often they're employed to sit there and wait for customers to come and ask them, I, I want something, come and tell me what I should buy. They're often unemployed until someone asks them, um, whereas online there's constant searching going on. How, how does a travel expert interrupt that online search process and get in there at the right time so that their, their expertise is required? You know, basically what we are trying to do, I mean, it's, I mean there's, there are some customers that go st straight to, to uh, our stores or they, they, they call their, and they directly call to, to, to our travel expert, but what we are also encouraging is to try to uh, they move our, our online customers to, to our offline uh, 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 channels. And especially what we are trying to do is we, we are putting some intelligence there. So if you are, uh, I don't know, browsing on a, on a Thailand uh, uh, landing page, you know, you will see there, you know, you can click to call there, and we, we will connect you to a Thailand travel expert. Yeah. And that's what we are doing all the time, because every time that some a customer, a user, you know, click, you know, we're, in, in, we're uh, multiplying like 25 times the conversion rate yeah. and about 40% of the revenue per lead. Yeah. So, so it's acquire online, try and convert offline, circumnavigate the process of, 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 of research and booking, yeah. which is, yeah. That, yeah, that, that, in, that increase, you know, uh, every time an online user becomes an offline user, you know, the lifetime value, it, it's like four times. So the, the, the MPS uh, increases, the revenues increases, so it's a really virtuous model. Yeah. So, so you, you said omnichannel in your little introduction. Um, well, I'd like to just get a bit of a definition from all of you about what you really see as meaning, what om omnichannel actually means. It's, it's used a lot, but I don't think anyone really puts any sort of definition. You know, the simple it. question is, you know, you need to be where the customers are, and the customers are in China. That's yeah. very clear. It was a bad joke, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but yeah, as, as I said, I mean, there's some customers that, that uh, do need support and do want to, uh, to speak with somebody, and, and that's why we should be there. So, but the same customer, maybe he, he wants to buy a, a flight, a, a short call flight, and so, so he will use our app. So the, that's, I think, that's, that's the clue, you know, to give different options to our customers. Yeah. Javier, what's, are you, do you describe yourself as an omnichannel uh, we try company? To. And what does that mean to be, for you? Yeah. Well, uh, similar to Juan Pablo's answer, we want to be where our customers want us to be. So we welcome customers from all channels, obviously, uh, but we do try to keep, um, not control, but we want to keep all doors open. Mm -hmm. So we're putting a lot of effort, for example, in our contact centers, uh, inbound and starting to do outbound as well, to complement the online options, and obviously also support the transactions made by someone else. We have forged partnerships in the last 30 years, and we expect to forge even more in the coming years. Yep. So it's a matter of being available where the customer wants you to be at the right time with the right price. 
and the right product, obviously. Are, are there times and are there channels where as a, as a supplier that's really you know, concentrated on putting beds, heads on beds and, mm. and, and running hotels, where there's channels which may be emerging, I guess maybe thinking about something like Instagram, some of those online channels which are maybe a little bit unproven yet, where you kind of think, we don't have to be in every channel. We're, we're, we're happy for other people to do that work for us yeah. currently, maybe prove it, and then see whether we go into it later. That was a very long question. Let Sorry. Me <laughs> <laughs> I probably answered it for you. <laughs> yes, let me answer it by pieces. So, uh, as I said before, we welcome uh, clients from every channel, right? Uh, mm. Obviously, we operate 35,000 rooms. You multiply that by 35, 365 days, you do the math, there's a lot of capacity to sell. Yeah. It would be really stupid to think that we would be able to sell that by ourselves through our websites and contact centers. It would be stupid from, from many angles. Let's just leave it there. So we're obviously constantly looking at ways that can help us optimize our revenue per available room uh, through the different costs that each channel has. So everyone needs to get paid whenever they're bringing someone into, into, our, uh, into our hotels. Uh, with that said, it is true that there's quite a lot of evolution in the, in the, in the shapes of those partnerships. In the past, some, maybe some 20 years ago, you would sign a static rate for yeah. one year with one tour operator that would send you people. You know, next year you would go for the same dinner at ITB, get drunk, sign contract again, mm. and that was the, the dynamic. Now, th that has changed dramatically and it's constantly changing. If you look at the matrix, the two by two matrix, on, off, direct, indirect, all those lines are starting to blur. At the end of the day, what we're looking for is an optimal solution that is going to bring the healthiest uh, and most diversified bottom line uh, to our owners. Yeah. And that's the game. Yeah. So there's, there was talk this morning about you know, uh, direct versus indirect distribution. Inevitably, given where we're at and the company that's running this, this conference. I'm the only um, supplier here against four. I think you are, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm a minority. So, so I'm going to look at you for the first answer. Well, you know, um, it, it's just, just part of the the game that's always been played to, to tweak the dial, get the direct, as much direct as you can? It, or is, is, there a, is, is there generally something different happening today where some suppliers believe there's a zero-sum game to be had here because the internet allows that direct connection with, with customers potentially? Or is it just part of the, the, the usual toing and froing of direct versus indirect? I think it's extremely short-sighted to think direct versus indirect and trying to capture as much demand as you can as a, as a, as, as a hotel operator. Again, you need to understand where you are operating. Let's say that tomorrow we open in Asia Pacific, which is not the case. But let's imagine that we're opening in Saipan Island, you know, south of Japan. Are we going to be able to sell any rooms by ourselves? Certainly not. We yeah. will need to forge relationships there to fill up those rooms. So at the end of the day, it's just a matter of understanding what's your product, what are the outgoing markets, the feeder markets, and find the right match between supply and demand. It would be stupid to think that we can fight against the Expedias or the bookings of the world. We like to have good relationships with every distributor that adds value. And adding value means conveying our product and the promise of our hotels to the, the, the demand they serve, to the markets they serve, to the users they serve. Yeah. So distribution is good. I don't think distribution is bad. Uh, commissions are necessary. Everyone needs to pay the bills. And you know, just think about the Expedia investment in technology or booking.com investment in technology plus SEM. It would be stupid to think that we can fight that. The, the, it, the, the wrong approach is fighting and confrontation. Partnerships is the right answer. Yeah. I've, I've heard it said on stage by a hotelier, a hotelier in the UK, uh, how you know, the, the hotels swapped uh, traditional agencies paying 10% commission for, for OTAs, thinking it was the, the, new, the new thing to do, who they pay 30% commission to, about, you know. Um, <laughs> and then start scratching their heads and said, how did that happen? <laughs> um, Martin, how did that happen? And, uh, <laughs> and, and, did, and did, did OTAs, you know, did they put themselves in this position? Because everyone talks about they being too, too expensive. Not, I but I think they're only talking about two, aren't they, really? Yes. But, yeah. It's not a devious uh, <laughs> game. And I think that that 10% went 11, 12, 15, 20, 30. And then I think it went 30 and then dropped down to more of a partnership level uh, that, that Javier is referring to. I, I think that it is, a, I'm really glad you said the word partnership because that's how we operate. You know, I, I, you know, we have very good partnerships and I'd like to think that like in any partnership, it's a two way street. It's not one just taking the commission and saying goodbye. Uh, it's both of us working together. We, we couldn't work with, uh, but I speak for the OTAs, we couldn't work with uh, uh, hotel chains, uh, for example, like Iberia Star, if it wasn't a partnership. Yeah. You know, they, they just, it just, I think in the, in the early days, it was much like 25% and we won't <laughs> speak to each other. Uh, but now it's definitely, it can't be that way. We've pr at least progressed from that 10% to, uh, to, a, to a nice place, I think. So, Ricardo, do you, do you 
Can you be partners like that with everybody, or do you have to pick your partners? You know, partners like last minute, I don't think so, but <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely, yes. I, I, I think that something that we have learned in the, in the recent times is we need to focus on the profitable transactions we can do. So for sure, uh, I'm not able to sell everywhere every kind of product. So I have to support my partners to try to get value, to add value, and, and try to focus in the things that I really do in a proper way. Because if I start to do everything, uh, at the end of the day, I, I don't do anything, and I'm not profitable. And I guess this is an industry of profitable companies, and it has to be an industry of profitable companies. So I have to be, we have to be focused, and sometimes you have to learn that it's not necessary to be a super big company. So, uh, we don't need to, we, we don't try to be Expedia. We try to have our position, our market share, to be profitable, to grow, to offer something uh, with value, and, and that's it. I suppose that ultimately, if you, if you really understand your customer, going back to the, the local heroes, the, the reason they've succeeded is they understand the local market and what they're after. So in, in the UK, short haul, package, holiday, with holidays, you know, they don't want components, they want a holiday. There's a couple of companies understood that, and that's, that's what it. they provide. So if you understand them, you can provide that, that value. Is that what you're able to do for your selected hotel suppliers? You, you're able to add value to what they could do direct. That, that's that's really it. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, you find your... Uh, Ricardo, Ricardo was going to say <laughs> that uh, speaking you, find, <laughs> you find your niches, and you find your partners as well. And, uh, and your mean, strengths, you know, because yeah. sometimes you think that you are a strength in something, and you are not. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the last two years, it's no secret that lastminute.com is focused more on sun and beach, for example. Mm -hmm. So we speak to our partners who are sun and beach uh, hotels and, and chains, and uh, and we say, this is what we want to do. Are you going to help us? Can you, you know, can we have the support? Do you need the support? Where do you need it? And so it's, uh, the hotels are saying to us, we need, we, these are our need areas. We're saying these, these are our need areas. You know, so it's finding nice, I don't want to use the word synergies, but, uh, you have. Find, but finding nice synergies. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, Juan Pablo, we talked, I mean, we heard earlier about people and how important people are uh, in your sort of digital transformation kind of, but, but actually people do business with people as well. So how, how important are people in your business in terms of the supplier relationships that you have? Is, is that the reason you're so close to some suppliers, just that you've got the people in place who, who get on and do business together? You know, it, today, you know, uh, we, we see some, and a slide that was very clear that says people plus technology or people yeah. and technology. And yeah. That's something that we always say, you know, that uh, basically I believe that, you know, within the, in this industry, technology is extremely important, but uh, uh, on top of technology, so will people. People is what... Uh, allows everything to happen, and, in, 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 uh, and that's why it's really important that you know these travel experts, and that this this mean when you sit down with a supplier, or with, when you sit sit down with a customer or, or, or whoever, I mean it's it's really important that you have the right people, you know, really passionate, really committed, and really uh, yeah, really committed to create value together. And, and I think that we are in a very collaborative industry, and people is. is I think it's the most important thing. Yeah. You, you have high street agencies. Yeah. How many, how many do you have? Do you have uh, how many high street agencies, shops? Do you uh, we have uh, yeah, about 100. 100. Yeah. Um, and and what, what is the uh, situation on the high street in those places you have? In, in the UK, high street is under pressure. Yeah. And it has been for a long time. But there's some that are flourishing. What, what's the situation in your market? Uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely, uh, sometimes it, it, it it's, it's, uh, of course, it's, be, it's expensive to be uh, yep. there, yep. but you know what? What, what, we, what we are trying to do is try to be all along the, the, the country. So it's not that we're focusing just on shopping malls or on main avenues, but you know we are we are growing a lot on, on small and medium-sized cities, and mainly on a franchise model. So it's it's working, and each one know how much uh, they can pay, and and it works. Yeah. And the consumer, are, are, are they are the younger? Oh. oh dear. Apologies for that. <laughs> are the younger consumers coming into the store? You'd, you'd, you'd expect not, if you believe everything you believe about millennials, they're not really interested in talking face to face or online all the time? Uh, or is that not true? It's not, that's not true. As, as a matter of fact, definitely, you know, uh, what we are funding on the stores are like the, you know, on, uh, they are above 40s or above 45 customers, and maybe customers on their on the 20s. It's, yeah. it's like you know, younger customers are are, are 
uh, are feeling comfortable of sitting them down with a travel expert. Is yeah. yeah. What, what, why is that? Because are, are they confused with what the choice that sounds like? Anecdotally in the UK, you hear there's a lot of confusion, too much choice. They, they just don't know where to look, so they look for an expert to just you know, curate the options down yeah, to a certain yeah, handle. Basically, they, they are, they are especially on complex, on complex trips, yeah. and, and what they look at is somebody that has been there, you know, that really can... I mean, they look, especially millennials are looking for experiences, so that they do want to, to visit a, a new destination, and they really want to uh, experience it. So they are looking for somebody that has been there and can put all to, put together all the different pieces to make that that trip memorable and uh, a great experience. Yeah. Uh, but going back to um, Xavier, but we talking about the pros and cons of OTAs versus traditional agencies. What's your view on, on the pros and cons of those two different channels? Do you, do you still see traditional agents as being a valuable source of, of, of leads and of Short business answer, uh, Absolutely, yes. Uh, I don't know if the mic is working or not. Yep. So. Uh, absolutely, yes. So we do see value coming from the traditional uh, distributors and traditional tri uh, travel agencies. But I think those are changing substantially. The, again, those lines are, are blurring. Every traditional tour operator now has an online branch. Mm -hmm. uh, you see online companies that were born pure digitals that are going to the highest street. So things are no longer digital, non-digital. I think what matters is selling, understanding your customer, and that will happen no matter if it's online or offline. So if you have that knowledge and that ability to sell because you have the right product, then you are relevant in the ecosystem. If you don't have some of those uh, components, you will no longer be relevant. Yeah. That's certainly, Terry, early on from Alibaba, was talking about the mom and pop mm -hmm. uh, businesses and keeping them going through this marketplace. So everyone wants to be a marketplace. You may call it a platform, marketplace, whatever you call it. What, what, what do you see as being the real impact of these emerging? Everyone, there's a, there's a lot of competing marketplaces. So I think Indeed. Alibaba seems to be pitching for that global marketplace along with Expedia, et cetera. What, what, what's, what's this gonna, so how is this gonna impact travel, these marketplaces? On the Asia Pacific, uh, I have, I have a, a thought that I would like to share with everyone. I've been going to conferences all over the world for the last 10 years, and Asia Pacific has a staggering numbers, and the growth figures are just, you know, really high, but no one has been able to really tell me how to delve into that region, that outgoing market of massive numbers. Yeah. So it is growing a lot, but it appears that for the Western companies, it's very difficult to capture um, that demand. So the friends from Rakuten, from Alibaba, anyone that can help us getting to that market, we will be very, very grateful. Because yes, the opportunity is there, but how do you, how do you close the gap between the opportunity and the market reality that each one of us hoteliers uh, need to defend? That's, that's a big question mark still to date. Yeah. But, but before we spoke, Martin, you said, look, last minute is a marketplace. Yeah, we're trying. <laughs> so there's a, there's a kind of a, a range of marketplaces out there. What, what, do they all compete with each other? Do they collaborate? It's driven, I don't know. I, just, I don't know is the answer. It's <laughs> driven by the customer for sure. Yeah. Uh, we, for example, at lastminute.com integrated uh, Airbnb on the hotel search. And um, we didn't know how it might, uh, would it cannibalize, would it, uh, would it be incremental? And uh, we found, happily, it's incremental. So I oh, think that okay. there's a place for lots of different things. You know, I, I think in the past we were scared of uh, using different uh, components and selling different products. But, um, but now we feel that um, marketplace is, is definitely... You know that was said before, for the consumer, they don't, yeah. they don't care. The, you, oh, you're a meta search, exactly. you're, you're an agent. Who cares? I, I just want... I the consumer's going to open 20 different tabs. Yeah, when well, I've come to your site because yeah. Google's probably told me to come to your site. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I want something. If you can't provide it, yeah. you're not and giving me what go I want, elsewhere, are you? So so you kind of have to do everything. I mean, yeah. you, your Airbnb um, relationship then, does that, is that similar to other supplier relationships? Have you... Have you are they, are they open to this sort of B2B? Well, I mean, we, we I think, um, as many different things, it's, uh, it's a test and, and we see how the, 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 you know, how everything performs. But, you know, that kind of performance has been very good, it's been very fruitful, and it just tells us that we, perhaps we should do more. It, sh yeah. you know, it only um, validates the marketplace and uh, only opens us up to more opportunity and uh, wishing we could do more. Uh, you know, maybe just not being fast enough, but uh, we want to be faster because we've seen that um, these kind of tests are really fruitful, really yeah. cool, really good for the customer. Is the is the 
Mantra. Metric. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, mantra and the metric that we're measuring. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, Marketplace is a complicated word because, yeah. you know, from an economic point of view, uh, a marketplace is a two-sides market platform, okay? Uh, the more suppliers you have, the more customer you have, okay? And an OTA, an online travel agency, is a two-sided market. So it is exactly the same. But marketplace in the recent years has a different meaning from a legal point of view. That means, okay, I don't have a responsibility because you are signing directly an agreement with the suppliers. And this is... Uh, a, a, a huge difference, okay, all of us are a marketplace, uh, maybe not even a star, but all of us have something of a marketplace, but do you want to offer to your clients the image of you don't take care of the trip, or you want to give to tell them, okay, guys, don't worry because I'm here to take care of your trip, of your hotel, or whatever, and, and, and in this very line, you know, is where we are moving. Mm. And I don't think it's it, don't take care of your customers yeah. because I, it's I, a different if, you, if you think about Amazon, I mean Amazon, I mean they do take care, but you know, 58 of of their business is you know is third party. Yep. So the, the the question is how to balance that profitable, as you said, profitable content and quantity of content, and you know, get into the long tail because as you know, if you increase you know the amount of content, you will increase your customers and. You know that works. That's, yeah, it is what the customer promises of the marketplace. And a lot of platform models, not just in travel. Think about Facebook in publishing, which is kind of our area. You know, the argument has been we're not responsible for what people put on our platform. It's just the platform; they can just do what they like with it. That, that's not true because, to a certain extent, they do intervene because they can't put anything on there. It's just where the where the where the boundaries are, are, are drawn. So. You get regulators coming in and saying you can't just take no responsibility. There's always some responsibility to have, but it's what you say openly is your responsibility. What, what's your view on that, um, Well, Carlos? Uh, data is from the user. The user gives you the data, provides you the information that you need to to, to the reservation. So you have to be careful about this data. And when you sell, when you pass it to a third party, you must make the third party be responsible too. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, okay to not be responsible for it. Yeah. Uh, what, what, about we, the, what about the product itself? Yeah. You know, you, do you take responsibility for the performance of the product, but only to a certain extent? Because you can't possibly guarantee every experience in every property you sell, for instance. So what, what extent do you take responsibility for that? Uh, we, we, we should handle it with the best, uh, report, the best way we can. Uh, next year, we're going to start a, our a Brazilian GDPR. We, d we doesn't know how it will handle, because it's not finished yep. by law. But we, it will be a challenge for us. It will be a challenge for the third parties. Our marketing teams are beginning to talk with the products that we use, because they should, boost, should be prepared for it itself, as we do need to be prepared. Yeah. So there's regulations coming along in Brazil, similar to what we've seen in yes. Europe. I believe there's something in California coming along as well, isn't there, about, about data as well. So this, it's happening more and more, which, which brings us to the question of how, how you do monetize data. And I, I wonder whether we get, we're moving to a point where companies that are sort of obviously and blatantly monetizing other people's data, that, that will become un, unacceptable. Um, what, 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 what do you think about the monetizing of the data you collect through what you do? Who's, who's going to say that one? Everyone tries to monetize data. Right? Uh, there are obviously companies that are much better than others at doing so because they were born in the digital era and they've been the data platforms as such. Uh, it's not our case. Our core business is hospitality. It's what happens between check-in and check-out, you know, forging memories, having great breakfast, beautiful rooms, and all the rest of it. Yeah. So our core business is not data, but other companies are uh, focused on that and they are merchants of data and they're doing a great job. So mm -hmm. as long as the data is, the use of the data brings value to the user and it is used in a moral and ethical way, yeah. I think there should be no problem. Uh, what I perceive, and I'm giving my personal opinion now, uh, is that the regulator is always trying to control absolutely everything, and probably it lays in the middle. If you look at the North American regulation versus the European regulation, they tend to be very different in the approach. Uh, they have to same reality because the platforms are used in the same way in both sides of the pond, right? But the approach to the regulation, the regulatory bodies are very different in the way they do it. Yeah. We did, we did a session in London a few weeks ago, and a guy from Culture Trip said he sees three internets emerging. So the, the GDPR internet, the North American internet, where it's a little bit less uh, restrictive, and then the Far East internet, where it's 
far all west. game. Yeah, well, it, it's far just, is far west. It's far west, yeah. <laughs> Um, where, where there's no, there's kind of no rules. It's a bit, it's a bit all, all, all for grabs. Do, do you see, do you see that, Martin? That there's, there's, there's three different approaches now, and that will be the case, or I will mean, things start to merge together? I'm not, I'm uh, not in my field of expertise. I don't think, no. but uh, certainly uh, we've seen, uh, certainly we see different markets act in in different ways, and we take a lot of expertise. Uh, for instance, uh, our German market, we take a lot of good ideas and expertise and apply it to French and UK market, for example. So I, I imagine that will be the case, but yeah. I don't know, not sure. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's go back and talk about the, um, the, the, the customer again, because we keep saying back to the customer, and start with the customer and work backwards and then provide what they want. So I just wonder what you guys thinking are the changing expectations um, of, of customers. We, we talked about data actually, maybe younger generations coming through will care less about what happens to their data. Yeah. Um, so we have to keep on top of that. What, 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 do you think, what are you seeing as the main customer expectations? Well, we, certainly, we certainly see a trend in the younger, I'll be careful what I say, but the younger generation <laughs> being more free uh, with their data, which is a worry. Uh, <laughs> from being a parent, it's a yeah. worry for me anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you, we certainly see that uh, the, the younger generations, the millennials, are much more open and, and free for sharing. And I is think that, they is that a time of life thing, <laughs> where when they, when they become parents, they'll think that was crazy. Yeah, I hope. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I hope. <laughs> but uh, I think what we see, like I think what you mentioned earlier, was that uh, they certainly take a lot more influences from their friends, uh, you know, not online, but uh, from, you know, from their actual, in real life, from actual real people. Um, and I like uh, uh, earlier when we heard about uh, um, not just wanting to experience what your boring parents experience, going to the Eiffel Tower, so what, that's boring. They want to do their own creative, uh, build their own creative package. Yeah. Um, I don't know, so I love these trends. That's what I think we are about, is inspiring, uh, and motivating uh, customers to do create, be creative, yeah. and not just book I mean, the. And if you're in intermediaries, the move to more experienced stuff must be yeah. you know, heaven sent, really, yes. because who else is going to be able to think about that creatively? I, I, for the intermediaries on the stage, how are you grasping this opportunity of providing experience beyond flight hotel? Because everyone can do that now online, can't they? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I was thinking about the, about the Instagram, and Instagram is a super good example. It's, it's related to what you said. Uh, for example, if you look at the Instagram account of Last Minute, Destinia, Hotel Urbano, El Mundo, whatever, more or less is the same. It's great pictures from great, great destination, and that's it. But for example, the number one in Spain uh, in Instagram is no one of us, or booking, or neither uh, Expedia. So uh, I guess the, the conversation with the generation said, with the young people has to be different, and maybe sometimes we are a little older for this, because yeah. at the end of the day, we have been here for 15 years, 20 years, and, and we have to try to modulate to reach this real new generation. Yeah. And, and inside this, for sure, you have to, 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 to make the world wider and offer not only hotel, hotel plus experience, plus flight, plus activity, plus try to make a, a real package for everyone, and, and absolutely, yes. Yeah, definitely, uh, you know, I think that, you know, uh, the, the language, uh, you know, it, on, yeah. on, on Instagram, et cetera, the, I mean, it's, it's so, different, so different that basically uh, it, it doesn't work, you know, you showing uh, offers or promotions or whatever, it's, it's basically what you need to, to, to show is, you know, real uh, content. I mean, and for example, our, our social media manager has 22 years old. And yeah. Yeah. Like he's amazing. You know, <laughs> and, and we have a team that is are creating, create, creating content and, you know, doing a, lo a lot of really interesting stuff, but it has nothing to do with, you know, promotions yeah. and what, what would you would find on other type of, of, of channels. Do you get your customers to provide that content for you? So. You know, as they're experiencing what you want to sell future customers, they give you the content. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we are, we are very open on that sense. So we are like taking content of our customer and encouraging them to create uh, content in, and, and, and show to, to, yeah. to other guys. So we are like very open in, in that way. And Javier, how, how's that affecting the hotels? Be uh, hotels looking at their properties, where they are, what they offer, and saying, "Is this Instagrammable enough?" And maybe who knows, you know, just because this is this is really important, isn't it? Instagramming is becoming a verb that we need to master. Absolutely, yeah. yes. And to your previous question is how are customer expectations evolving? I would say harder and harder to fulfil. 
and technology plays a, a key role, but at the end of the day, it connects back with the, with the discussion we had in the morning. It's all about people. So in the hospitality industry, it's a service industry, it's a people to people. You know, these guys do a great job selling and distributing our products, but it's us who need to fulfill, you know, the check-in, the smile, the hug, the good meal, the beach, the clean pools, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, EC Sharp, founder of Four Seasons said, memories are just moments that refuse to be forgotten. Our job as hoteliers is to create those experiences. The experiences do not exist online. They exist in our hotels, in our properties, and they're beautiful experiences. Yeah. So we need to use technology to enhance those experiences and to convey those experiences to other people in order to provoke or trigger you know, the interest of coming over to us. But technology is, is, is a means, it's not the end. Yeah. So that's the experience in destination, in property, which obviously... The experience, you, you, by definition, you, in this panel is us. You can control <laughs> that, yeah. Pr prior to that, you the experience of going through the booking process, which can be really frustrating. I mean, I, I happen to have three kids, yeah. and I think any, talk to anybody in travel, when you have two parents and three kids, <laughs> and you put that into any search engine, it, break, it breaks, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You, you break travel by having three kids. <laughs> so It's not easy. I mean, <laughs> well, it's... You think it's not easy. But I'm a customer. I think it should be easy. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a customer telling you guys, yeah. come on, three kids, it's not unusual. Some people have four kids. What, what, why, is, why can't that be solved? I mean, there must be an answer to that. Even Expedia can't do two and three. Yeah? So, so there's some, there's some uh, sites that are, are really good at being the <laughs> family experts. Is that yeah. last minute? No, no. Uh, we're, we're okay. I think we're okay. <laughs> but, uh, but I have had the same challenge, so I know it's a real challenge. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't have an answer for it, really. Uh, but it, does, it, does it go back to what I think I said before? I think Microsoft was saying it's the back yeah. office systems. Yeah. Don't allow. They're the barrier to, to, to doing what we're talking about doing, making the customer feel as though they're being really valued. Is that, is that what's happening there? There's a back yeah. office issue. It has, it has to do a lot with legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Many of these systems are created, you know, yeah. the GDS was originally created in the late 50s by I, IBM and American Airlines, and it was one seat, you know, 150 seats mm -hmm. sold one by one in a plane. The rooms are supposed to be double rooms, but, but because of some definition that someone did in the 60s, again. So changing that paradigm has proven to be extremely difficult. Yeah. And the user, as you, father of three, like I am, we're looking for flexibility, right? Yeah. But it's still not built into the systems. Yeah. So guys, wake up and smell the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Yeah, we'll right, I've written it, challenge, I've, I've written it down. <laughs> no, but yeah. it's true, because uh, it's what we said before. Uh, sometimes we are thinking about the next big thing, about boys, about great technologies and we forget that in the short term there's more needs you know what you are saying yeah. payment so, methods, some of the this kind of happen. things so every time you have to book a hotel room in, 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 more, in the majority of the OTA you have to take out your credit card and put the number and after the CVV and this is crazy because we have the technology to overcome it so uh, it's absolutely true yeah. yeah I think one of you guys I, when I asked the guys for sort of ideas or questions use the term humanizing the transactions you know, which is ob obviously key, but it's not very humanizing at the minute. Sometimes it's actually, I mean, I I've, had, I've recently had the pleasure of trying to book flights via MetaSearch, and I, I wonder what, what your views is of the value MetaSearch brings and the experience of using MetaSearch for the consumer. It can be very frustrating, it seems to me, with the prices, are they real? Does that, is that what the price you get when you get through to the end of the booking? What, what, what value do you think MetaSearch brings, and are we going to see changes there as we humanize the, the transaction? Anyone? Yeah, I think MetaSearch will be uh, a key party to this kind of business because uh, it must be fast. You have to be fast to answer to a MetaSearch. I mean, two seconds is a lot of time for them. Once that's okay, less than one second is perfect for them. So if you have, if you respond uh, much time or you have different price, you're gonna be, you will suffer something. Yeah. You're gonna lower the, your, your score, your price, your bid price will be higher. So we're gonna train our systems to be okay, to be, to, oh, if you, you, you handle a price in the meta search, you, you must show the same price on your site. It's kind of uh, too uh, nice, I think. Yeah. It's kind of not as simple as that, is it? Because the price is a, is a price, but there are other value aspects to any, even a simple flight booking, time of, time of, time of departure, yeah. which airport it is, do you need it's a complex. taxi, can you get a train, all this, and actually the simple price of the flight actually is only part of it. Why can't MetaSearch say, well, here's the full value of the thing you're buying? But the problem with MetaSearch is, is, is the following. So, first of all, MetaSearch, I don't think, 
is good if it doesn't allow suppliers who are participating on, on the meta search to differentiate themselves. Yep. So it can over commoditize the product, and that's bad. But again, meta search was built on, on, on two pillars. The first one, the, the industry promise, you know, it's a very promiscuous industry, and the prices are going, and the availability is it's going up and down, uh, and it's not managed in a very professional way. And as a result of the hotels, and them, you know, I'm now criticizing myself as a group hotel uh, industry, uh, we were unable to control the supply in the right way. Now, that was the perfect recipe for MetaSearch to thrive, because users had, for the same room, same hotel, same date, you know, a plethora of op pricing options, uh, and MetaSearch was making that very evident, which, was, which is not a good story from, from a supplier perspective. As long as that continues to happen, MetaSearch will be valuable, but MetaSearch needs to evolve in order to help us or any player who's featured in the, in the listing to differentiate from one another. Yeah. Because hotel industry is, by definition, should not be a commodity. In my opinion, a flight is much, or, much more of a commodity. You know, out of a one week vacation, you're gonna spend two hours going in, two hours going out, but the rest of the, of the week, of the 160 hours, are going to be yeah. in the And, and there's even airlines arguing they shouldn't be seen as a, such, a, such a commodity. But, you know, um, I mean, in a, in a world where we do, we're personalizing and, and the offer is for you personally at this time, and there is no price, there is no set price really for anything. You can see prices, everyone's yield managing now. Yeah. Um, does, does Meta exist in the future when, when price is entirely fluid like that? Anyone? I Doesn't mean, make any sense. <laughs> I can't see it going away. No. Uh, it's given everyone, it's given the customer choice. Yeah. So, we, I mean, we spoke about the marketplace. It's the same thing, right? It's, uh, it's uh, probably supporting the customer in having to go to, or they imagine anyway, the customer, instead of going to 10 different sites, I can go to one site. Um, yeah. It gives the illusion. Does it validate maybe? So, yeah. uh, I, I've, been, I've got an offer. Yeah. Is, this the, is this the cheapest in the market? Can I test that? Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's, that's, that's its value, is it? And, and maybe it's, uh, it, it diversifies the customer so that uh, you'll have a customer who's very happy to go on all the meta sites. You're happy. F there's a customer that would just go to a brand site. There's a customer that would go to OTA. So yeah. it's helping, if you like. Uh, it's the illusion of choice. Yeah. Yeah. But Absolutely. it's, yeah. you know. This is the, this is the, war, the illusion of choice. Yeah. Maybe go back to earlier. You, you you can value the customer based on what channel they come through. If they come from a meta site, yeah. you, you you know what you're getting, kind of thing. Yes. Um, um, we've got four minutes left, so ah. not far. Gone really quickly. Um, let let's just complete the discussion, going from far end to this to to to, to, the, to this end. J just if you if you could make one sort of hard and fast prediction. I know predictions are a mugs game, but you know. That's what we're here for, I suppose. Um, for the next five years, or one, 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 one sort of top tip for the guys in the room about what you see coming and how they should respond to it. What, what, what would it be? Is it, you know, is it emerging channels or different customer behaviors? So start the farm. You've got the easy job because you've got everything to go at. It's, it's, it's a complicated <laughs> question, sure. Uh, I guess the payments are going to evolve uh, at the fastest rate ever, and I guess payments is something we have to work on harder. Uh, and I guess there will be a consolidation process for sure in the intermediaries, but not so big as the people can imagine. I okay. guess there is a space for everyone. And, and the payments, the payments issue is that a again is that a back office issue? Is it a, uh, an it, it's a it's integration? It's a combination of a lot of things. If you look at the Asian market for the Asian uh, customer, uh, you know there's a survey from Hotels.com that say that the the f I guess the 60 percent of the Asian uh, online customer thinks that the worst thing of the OTAs is the payments being able to pay with the mobile, to pay immediately, automatically. And I guess this is something that in, in combinates a lot of things. But okay. back off issue, sure. Fine. Great. OK. I, I might be speaking too broad, but uh, I'm, I'm ex personally excited about artificial intelligence. So I'm, I'm very excited on the day where, uh, you know, you literally hear all the time, Alexa, Cortana, uh, <laughs> book me a hotel. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm excited when that, that, that transaction will actually take place, yeah. uh, where it'll be a very smooth uh, booking process uh, well, away day, from typing. Uh, you know. yeah. And one day it might be book me a holiday. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, book me a holiday. I don't care what destination. I want to leave tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Or even with the little video screens now, get me my travel agent. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and there they are. So it comes back to the human. Yes. Quan pops up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hello, what do you want? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> well, I agree that AI is going to, you know, will change, change absolutely everything. 
especially in travel. But I think that, that the next thing coming, and it, I think it's going to be like an ev the evolution of the of meta search, are, are going to be ma uh, marketplaces. Um, probably Amazon, Google, and Facebook uh, will go down the, ch the, the funnel and will, yeah. will, uh, will be very relevant there. Yeah, I think in five, ten years, probably our the, the problems we are talking today will be totally different. Uh, the OTAs probably will be sitting in the house of the people, the person, the uh, Cortana or something like that will be showing you. To, oh, how can I help you? Where are you going to go? Uh, the personalization will be much more deeper than we have today. Mm. AI will be in another level. It's something that we, we cannot handle today. Final word. Final word, the uh, next five to 10 years, I think the, the, the key game is embedding data and technology at the core of business operations. If you are a hotel, then it's enriching and enhancing that uh, op hospitality operation. If you are a distribution or tech player, then it's gonna be a different game. But getting the right technology and the right data working for you as an asset, that's at least what we are going to work on obsessively for the Thank next you. five years. And Google and Amazon were mentioned just briefly, obviously, and put you on Facebook to that, th three massive tech players. Impact on them in the next few years? They'll be more, get more into travel, more deeply into travel. Absolutely, all of them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, positive or negative for you? Positive. Yeah. Okay. There, there's this kind uh, of. And for travel in general. In, in general, there's this mingling feeling of you know these guys are bad, these guys control data. No, these are great companies doing great things with great products that have been able to seduce the user with their services. Yeah. Let's just partner up with them. Let's not think they're here to eat our lunch. Yeah. Super. Great. It's just flashing, so that means, Lars, we're out of time, isn't it? <laughs> That's bad news. <laughs> Done. <laughs> OK. So um, before I hand back to Lars, I just, can you please join me in thanking the guys, because I think they did a yeah. really good job. So thanks to Javier, Carlos, Juan Pablo, Martin, and Ricardo. Thank you very much.